Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting this brick fireplace wall using a DIY chalk paint. Stick around and I'll show you how I do it. This brick fireplace in our living room was in desperate need of a makeover. We have plans to completely remodel our entire house and eventually add built-ins on either side of the fireplace with a custom mantle in the center. But for now, I decided to give it a quick makeover. Last year, I removed the old dated mantle and sold it, but we never replaced it. After looking on Pinterest, I am definitely obsessed with the look of brick peeking through chipping paint. I have seen many techniques used to create this look, including lime wash mixtures, white mortar grout, or expensive custom paints, but I've decided to use an inexpensive DIY chalk paint mixture using leftover paint and plaster of Paris. For this project, I am using some leftover eggshell paint by Glidden. It was in a custom color match, which was basically a soft white color. You can certainly use any color that you'd like to create this same effect. I would recommend using a flat, matte, or eggshell type paint. You'll also need a paint can opener, a paint stirrer, and a paintbrush of your choice. I have a few here, but ultimately in the end, I used the larger chip brush with cut bristles. And the key ingredient here is this plaster of Paris. You can find this at Home Depot, Lowe's, any craft store or hardware store in your area. And you'll also need a little bucket to mix up your chalk paint. To prepare the brick, I just used an old vacuum cleaner and gave it a quick cleaning. This fireplace has hardly been used. If your fireplace has been used a lot, you may want to clean it with a heavy duty or cleaner or scrub brush to remove any soot or debris that may be on the brick. To make the chalk paint, I brewed hot water in my Keurig and mixed it with some plaster of Paris. Now normally, I want my chalk paint smooth for painting furniture, so I make it like this. But after adding the paint to the mixture and testing it, it was just way too thin. So I added more plaster of Paris directly to the chalk paint to thicken it up. In this particular case, any texture to the paint is a good thing. And depending on what kind of paint you're using, this will be trial and error until you get it to the consistency that you're happy with. Now, some of these techniques, like the German smear technique, use mortar to fill in the joints and cover more of the brick. And then some other techniques are more of a diluted whitewash. So there are several ways to accomplish a similar look, but I chose this one because I love the technique I already had all of the materials on hand and the mess is minimal and it dries super quickly. So I just continued to paint over those old dirty joints. As you can see here, this brick has a lot of texture and varying depths on each piece, which I love. The entire exterior of my house is the same brick, and each one has several different colors as well. After I painted a small section of joint lines, I loaded my Annie Sloan brush with some paint and used several different types of brush strokes and dragging techniques to cover more of the brick with the paint. This is the part of the painting process where you're depositing varying amounts of paint onto the brick, highlighting some areas and leaving some other areas exposed. And this is definitely where personal preference comes in. You can use as much or as little paint as you want. You can thin the paint down or make it as thick as you want. It really is all about the look that you're going for. And I will definitely say that it's better to start with less paint and add as you go in small increments. I then switched to the larger chip brush with the cut bristles because I found it worked the best for the joints and I actually ended up using it for the rest of the project so I didn't have to switch back and forth between paint brushes. 
As I went along, I decided to add even more plaster of Paris to give the chalk paint more volume. So if you decide to use this method, I would recommend starting out with your paint in a container and then slowly adding about a fourth cup of plaster of Paris by itself without diluting it first to the mix at a time. If it gets super thick on you, just add more paint or a little water and continue adjusting it until it's the consistency that you want to work with. And again, after I covered the joints, I then took the paintbrush and applied different amounts of paint and varied my brush strokes to create an old, worn look, unique to each brick. These bricks already have so much character, so it was easy to bring that out as I painted. If your brick is more uniform, I would suggest using a very thick chalk paint plaster of Paris mixture to add some texture as you go. And I will say on projects like these, it's best to have one person do the entire thing. That way the technique is consistent across the entire surface. Okay, I stepped back to take a look at the finish so I could see the overall look and to see if I needed to add more white paint in any certain areas. And I could not believe how much brighter the room felt and how fresh the fireplace looked from the old dirty dingy way it did just a couple hours before. I had been debating on whether or not to paint the brick because I really loved it, but I really feel like the paint has brought it to life by highlighting the shape of each brick. Now, if your brick is ugly, it's just an ugly color and you don't want that showing through the white paint, go ahead and give it a base coat of whatever color you want showing beneath the white paint, whether that's a brick red, a dark gray, or a combination thereof. Paint it whatever color you want showing through and then go over it with your white paint. I have been painting for years, but even if you are a beginner, I believe anyone can do this. If you are uncertain at first, start with less paint and slowly add it in stages. It's possible to sand or scrape some of the paint back off, but it would be a lot more messy and it could possibly damage your brick. Just remember, the key to this aged look is having thick to thin paint. You want the paint to look weathered and worn through, even though you just applied it. Here was the brick fireplace before. Installed in 1990, it was due for an update. Even with removing the dated mantle, it still needed refreshed. And here is the after. I absolutely love this look and could not be happier with the decision to paint it. I am always amazed with the power of paint. The entire process took me just a few hours and even if you had to go purchase everything that I used for this, it would only cost you between $20 and $30 in materials. I am so excited to decorate and brighten the rest of my living room. I will definitely be posting an update video after my husband builds the mantle and possibly the side cabinets. If you are interested to see more DIY home renovations and DIY decorating projects, as well as more how-to videos, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I would also love to hear from you in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and also if you've ever painted any brick around your house, please let me know what you used and how it turned out. 
Be sure to check out the other videos on my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspired you to tackle that DIY project in your home that you've been debating over forever. Please like this video, comment below, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.